is pretty much 50 50 50 percent positive emotion 50 percent this sucks and she mentions which is something i also believe that when we delude ourselves into believing that we should only feel positive emotion we create a lot of suffering in our experience of reality and so for the month of november we as a collective in her self-coaching scholars are talking about emotional balance that's the theme for november and she's kind of going through this list of emotions and she's talking about you know what feelings are and how to identify feelings blah 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 and then she says you know a lot of times people will want to tell me that they feel anxious and she's like i don't consider anxious a primary emotion which i thought was really interesting She's like, to me, anxiety is a cover-up emotion. And I was like, man. And the reason this was such an eye-opening thing for me is because this is something that I have been dabbling in myself. Like, the belief that anxiety itself is not actually a feeling. It's like a cover for a certain set of feelings, like, below that. And she says, typically, when someone says to me they're anxious, it's because they're suspended in this, like, resistance what they actually need to be feeling is below that but it is so uncomfortable to feel what they need to feel below that and they either have like a judgment around their feeling or a fear of feeling their feeling or some story around what feeling that feeling will feel like that they're in this suppress 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 And when you're doing that and you're suppressing, you create resistance and you create this tension inside of yourself. And you consciously don't know that you're generating this tension, but you, your energetic body can feel the tension and it shows up as anxiety. I am anxious. And I was thinking about when in my life have I felt the most anxious, like really really deeply like want to crawl out of my skin anxious and that was right after I had my son and what was happening after I had my son was of course hormonal fluctuations which happen when you have a child but deeper than that what was happening was that I had um, resentment towards my child because my life had now changed so dramatically. I was mourning the life that I had before I became a parent. And I felt an immeasurable amount of grief around this new life that I had and how how scared I felt about being a mom and how little I felt like I knew about being a mom. And I judged those feelings so fucking hard. I felt like a horrible human being because I had resentment towards this child. I felt like a horrible person because in that moment, I didn't want to be a mom. And I felt really bad about that. I really judged myself super hard about that. And I never said that out loud. Like, I think I just came to the point where I was able to say that out loud for the first time, not even too long ago. Um, And... I think living in that place where I had such intense grief and resentment and also judgment about that and not wanting to acknowledge the depth of the feeling that I was feeling and how horrible it felt kept me in a place of severe anxiety, which showed up like really erratic behavior, not being able to sleep at night, doing a lot of really weird shit and believing a lot of really weird shit in my head. And... You know, this this coach, her name is Brooke Castillo. She's a very... Her perspective on life is pretty much everything that I believe. She studies all the teachers that I've, that I've studied. She's just been doing this work longer than I have. And when she said that, and she said, you know, I really feel like depression, things like depression and anxiety are not primary feelings. They're like secondary feelings that come up when we are negating an original feeling or negating an original experience long enough that builds up in our system and it becomes this thing that we then identify with. And we've gotten removed from the original feeling that we were trying not to feel, so now we're feeling this and we're saying that this is the primary experience of the feeling. 
And so I just wanted to hop on and offer you guys that because I know I get a lot of questions about anxiety, especially in our November group, which started today. There's pretty much everybody who joined the November group is struggling with anxiety and especially anxiety around the holiday season and whether it's anxiety around family in the holiday or anxiety around food in the holiday or finances or whatever the trigger is for their anxiety. And one of the things that I want to go in there and teach on tomorrow, tomorrow's my day to go in there and teach. Um, is this that we really need to come present with what the primary emotion is that's creating the tension that's leading to the anxiety because when it comes to like food anxiety right like you go to a family gathering and they have a specific kind of food and you want to make more conscious choices when it comes to how you feed your body and you start to feel anxiety while you're sitting there at the dinner table or you're at the buffet or whatever. Understanding what the primary emotions are that you might be feeling in that circumstance that's leading you to feel anxious, right? Like probably, like for me, when I've dealt with food anxiety and social situations, the primary emotions are anger, used to be. Like I'm angry that I even have to think about what I'm gonna eat. I, I was fucking pissed. I lived in a place of being really angry that I even had to be conscious of what I ate because I knew that I had an imbalanced relationship to food. So anger would be one of my primary emotions. Fear, doubt, um, worry, um, uh, self-consciousness, right? These are, these are the things that we're feeling in those moments and that lead us to the experience of anxiety when we're not addressing them from that primary place so how would our experience of reality be different if instead of associating with the secondary emotion like anxiety we would be identifying what the primary emotion is and dealing with it in that primary place and therefore we're not bypassing the original emotions that led to something like anxiety for example um and i i kind of really agree with that the more that i explore depression and anxiety as not primary emotions and more I'm like man if I think about every moment in my life where I can say I felt depression like I just shared a post about when my boyfriend died when I was 14 years old he got killed by a car um, and it was right in front of the school and it was very public death and it was super tragic and I didn't speak for two weeks in school to anyone I was so depressed. The primary emotion that I was feeling was grief. I was like really grief stricken. I was drowning in my experience of grief and loss. And I was also drowning in guilt because I had broken up with him like two days before he got killed. So I had all of this guilt and all of this grief consuming my 14 year old body and mind. And I had no idea what was going on. I had no language for what was happening, no awareness of what was happening. And so what I, what I did was I shut down and I went into depression because I didn't know what I was feeling and I didn't want to cope with what I was feeling. So I just checked out, right? And in a lot of ways, that's an easier thing to do than to feel those feelings, those primary feelings. So I did this exercise of going back into my life and kind of pulling out all these situations where I felt extreme anxiety or I felt depression and then applying my coach, my coach's concept and saying, okay, is this, can I find this to be true in all of these circumstances of my life? And so far I can. I can find more primary emotions underneath the anxiety. I can find more primary emotions underneath the depression than just anxiety or depression. And so I'm inviting you guys, maybe do that activity today. Pick two different situations in your life where you might have said you felt the most anxious or the most depressed and see if you can trace down to more primary emotions that you were experiencing in that moment that maybe were either very hard for you to feel and you didn't want to feel them or you weren't even aware that you were feeling them. You didn't have the language or the, the understanding of feelings that you have as an adult now. Um, and see if, if that is what you feel, if that is true for you. I'd be curious to know. Anyways, I hope you found this helpful and enlightening. I'm wishing you guys a happy 1st of November and a happy Thursday. Let's have an amazing end of the year, guys.